All right, in this video, we're going to do a quick review for the AP Stats Test over describing data with graphs. So lots to do here and lots to cover in a short amount of time. All right, so graphs show a distribution of your data. A distribution is what values the variable can take on and how often these values get taken on. So that's what a distribution shows you. Anytime you're asked to describe a graph, please make sure you write a sentence or two about all four of these topics. Shape, center, spread, and outliers. Doesn't have to be in that order, it can be in any order you want, but please make sure you talk about those four things. All right, so let's take a look at two very, very quick um, pictures here. This first one is a dot plot. All right, it shows the percent of moisture, um, that it, the percentage of the total weight that's moisture in corn and soybeans. Okay, great we see these dot plots. So if I'm going to compare them, I want to make sure I mention shape, center, spread. So what's the shape of both of these? Well, if I think about overall shape, they both look pretty symmetric. I mean, another one of them looks really skewed. They both look a little bit low on the outsides, kind of higher in the middle. Not extremely clear, but it, I would say symmetric. And if you're talking about the center, I would say both of them, you know, this guy clearly has a center somewhere around 13%. Even though there's only one value at 13%, there's about an equal amount on both sides. Even if you said 14%, that's fine. Pretty spread out, going all the way from 7% up to 20%. Now, soybeans, they might have a center around 14, maybe even 15, right? Now, and they're not as spread out. They only go from 8% to about 19 percent now are there any outliers here I don't really think so I mean there's you know each one this is kind of a lower value but it's not like it's really low I mean outlier has to be significantly far from the rest of the data but the important thing is if you're going to talk about corn and soybeans you're going to compare these please make sure you mention all four items all right here is a histogram at the bottom these are the prices of 304 homes <laughs> that were sold in a city. So let's make sure we understand or make sure we remember how to read a histogram. So on the bottom, we have our price in thousands of dollars, and I call them bins. This first bin is for any house that costs between $250,000 and $500,000. Now we call them left-handed bins because we equal the left side, we go up to the right side, which means that technically this goes from $250,000 up to $499,999. If a house were to cost exactly $500,000, it would be in this bin right here. So that's how you read a histogram. Now you can actually see how many houses fell into each bin. So obviously there were quite a few, 120 houses that were in that bin of $500,000 to $750,000. And this graph is definitely skewed to the right because there are very, very few houses at these extremely high numbers. By the way, this would be $250,000 thousands which would be millions so that would be a lot of money there very few houses cost that much money um, so again we see skewed to the right right skewed to the right means most of the data is on the left side very little data to the right side all right now a common question you're gonna get when you see a graph like this is to locate the median now you're not gonna be able to tell you exactly what the median is but you could kind of roughly find out where it would fall so let's do our formula. So to locate, not to tell you the median, but to find its location, you do 304 plus 1 divided by 2. So that's going to be 305 divided by 2. Now when we do 305 divided by 2, we're going to get 152.5. So we're trying to find out where is the 152 and a half value. Now there isn't going to be a 152 and a half value, but it means it's going to be right in between the 152 and the 153. So all we got to do is find that value. So we got 38 houses in this first bin, and we got 120 in the second bin. Now 38 plus 120 is 158. That means that the 152nd and the 153 um, house would have to fall somewhere in this bin right here. So the median must be in this bin. That's it. Now the only drawback to a histogram is that we don't know what the actual prices are. I mean, every house in this bin could be $600,000. Every single one. Or they could be spread out, some 500,000, some 550,000, some 575. I mean, who knows? The point is, all we know is 120 houses in that price range. We don't know what they actually are. 
So the other important thing that oftentimes is going to come up on the AP test is where's the mean in comparison to the median? Well, when you are skewed, the mean is always going to go towards the tail because the mean has to take every value, even those couple really high values, into account. So if the median is going to be in this bin right here, most likely the mean will be something greater. Now, is it going to be all the way up here at 2 million? No, but it's going to be greater than the median because those few high values are going to have a big effect on the mean and pull it up. So please make sure you understand that in comparison, this is a huge AP topic, comparing the mean and median in a histogram. Only on a very nice symmetric histogram will you see the mean and the median be about the same. Otherwise, the mean is always going to gravitate towards that tail. All right, now I also want to show you guys a quick box plot here. This is an airline record the number of on-time arrivals for a sample of 100 flights each day. So this was how many um, flights out of 100 were on time, the number of on-time arrivals. <coughs> so um, they looked at several days. It actually says record for one year. So it means they looked at 365 days, right? So they looked at 365 days. And they looked at each day, there's 100 flights, how many of them were on time. So let's make sure you guys remember how to read a box plot. This line right here in the middle is your median, which the median looks to be about 72, 74, 76, probably around 77. So the median is about 77 on time arrival flights out of 100 each day. Now, this graph is skewed to the right, right? You see the tail. The tail shows that the data on the right side is more spread out. Remember, in a box plot, you're split up by your quarters. So here's your min, here's your max, here's Q1, that's the first quarter. We already talked about the median in the middle, and here's Q3. These break the data down into quarters. So this is 25% of data. Now this right here, this is a very skinny little piece right here, also has 25%. But there's not less data there, it's just less spread out. So there's 25% of data in here, and then there's 25% of data on this upper chunk here. So again, every one of these parts contains the exact same amount of data, but the more spread out it is just means it's going to be longer. So the fact that this portion right here is more spread out means there's more spread to that data, not more data. So this is what's telling me it's skewed to the right because there's a lot of data chunked down here at the left, and then the data to the right spreads out. So a typical question is going to be, where's the mean? Well, I can't actually calculate the mean, but I will tell you that because the data is skewed to the right, the mean will be higher than the median. So it's a very common question. So um, what else can we figure out here? Well, Q1 looks to be about 76. Q3 looks to be about 80. So we could calculate the IQR. That would be Q3 minus Q1. I'm sorry, that's a 76, sorry. So that has an IQR of 4. Um, but again, the overall spread goes all the way from 72 to 94. That's because it's more spread out on those tails. So make sure you remember the little tiny details of a box plot. But again, the most common questions they're going to ask you about are IQR, median, and they'll oftentimes talk about where's the mean in comparison to the median. And make sure you know it's always going to go towards the spread on the right there. All right, so what do you need to know for the AP test? First off, you gotta know how to look at a graph and describe what you see. You've got to talk about shape, center, spread, outliers. You gotta do that. Do it in context. Don't just blah, give answers or give numbers. Talk in context. Use units, use the words from the problem. You gotta be able to compare two graphs. And when you compare, write a couple sentences comparing the center, comparing the spread, comparing outliers, comparing the shape. You gotta make sure you compare. Um, use mean and standard deviation with symmetric unimodal data. This will typically come up on the AP test, right? So anytime data is symmetric, you want to use the mean and the standard deviation to describe that data. Anytime your data is skewed, you want to use the median and the IQR to describe that data. I can't tell you how many multiple choice questions I've seen where they just show you a graph and they say, what would you use to describe this graph? Mean and standard deviation or median and IQR? Uh, or they might even give you some choices where it's like mean and IQR. Obviously, mean and IQR would never go together. So you got to make sure if you look at that graph and you're like, oh, that looks symmetric, go with the mean and go with the standard deviation. But if you see a skewed graph, go with the mean and IQR. That could be a free, easy, multiple choice question. 
All right, make sure you can compare the median and the mean of a graph. We already talked about this. The mean will always go towards that tail. Estimate and compare standard deviations. This is another uh, t uh, test question I've seen quite often. So they'll give you a couple graphs like this. They'll give you a histogram that looks like this. Very symmetric, right? They'll give you a histogram that looks like this. Also very symmetric, but in a different way. And then, sorry, I'm kind of getting lazy here. Then they'll give you one more that is very uniform. Uniform means it's the data is all very similar throughout. And they'll say, which one has the greatest standard deviation? Well, remember, standard deviation measures how far data is from the mean. All of them have the same mean, right smack dab in the middle. But this one right here is going to have the greatest standard deviation because if you look at it, most data is either far to the left or far to the right. That's going to have most data far from the mean, which is going to have the greatest standard deviation. This one right here will have the smallest standard deviation because most data is very, very close to the mean. Very little data is far from it. That's going to have a small standard deviation. And then this final uniform graph will have the medium standard deviation. It's not going to have a very big standard deviation because it's got a lot of data near the mean, but it's not going to have a very small standard deviation either because it's also got data far from the mean. So it's going to be very medium. All right, the last major thing you're going to be asked to do is to find the median in a histogram. And we already talked about that as well. So make sure you could do that. And we'll review that again here. All right, so here's a classic side-by-side -side stem and leaf plot that they'll ask you to compare. These were the um, ages in months of 55 bears and whether they were male or female. So they're going to say, hey, compare their centers. Okay, well, they have, you know, the males probably have a center somewhere in the, uh, 20 month range. How do I know this is months and not years? Because look at the little key down here. So maybe somewhere around 24 months would be a good um, center. And then for the females, it might be somewhere around 44 months. So the idea here is that, notice I'm not doing any advanced calculations. I'm just kind of using my eyes. And that's totally fine when you're looking at a graph like this. All right, what about their shapes? They actually both have very similar shapes. Now don't get tricked because the smaller numbers are at the bottom of this. So both of them are actually skewed to the right because the bigger numbers is to the right, right? If I were to make this a scale, bigger is to the right. So both of them have the tails going to those bigger numbers. They're both skewed right, so that'd be something that they have in common. Now what about their spreads? Well, it actually looks like the females are much more spread out because they range any from about 20 months all the way to a female bear that was 415 months, where the males only went from about 70 to 15 months. So you could talk about spread as well. Then you can mention outliers. I would say that these two bears right here are outliers for the females. Even I'm not doing any advanced calculations, just kind of eyeballing it, whereas the males, I really don't see any calculations at all here. Now, and then again, there's always going to be that question, how is the mean compared to the median? Well, because they're both skewed to the right, the mean is going to be a little bit higher for both of these than the median would. All right, here is side-by-side uh, -side, um, box plots. So what do they have in common? Q, uh, the median they have in common. Both of them have the same median. Both of them have the same Q3 here. So Q3 and Q3. Median, medium. Uh, which one is more spread out? Well, tournament two was much more, I'm sorry, tournament one was much more spread out than tournament two. Um, tournament one have a larger IQR. Remember, IQR is the distance from Q3 down to Q1, and that distance for tournament one is much bigger than for Q, uh, tournament two here. Um, but again, remember that each chunk, each part, represents 25%. So there's not more data in any of these parts, right? All of these parts are technically equivalent in terms of how much data is inside of them, but you can simply tell which parts are more spread out by the width of either the whisker or the box. So again, just make sure you're talking about everything. Now, typically outliers on a box plot are marked with asterisks. So I don't see any asterisks on these graphs, so I would assume they have no uh, outliers. All right, and that's it, guys. I just want to make sure you took a look at a couple examples. That way you can understand all this stuff. Oh, actually, sorry, I have a couple more here. Here's another one, um, that uh, another histogram here, skewed to the right. Center is probably somewhere around two siblings. And again, notice the mean is higher than the median. So let's actually take the time to find the median real quick, because again, I want to practice this, right? So there were 80 students in this group. So 80 plus 1 divided by 2 is 40 and a half. 
That does not tell me the median is 40 and a half. That's not even an option for the number of siblings. It's in the 40.5 position. So let's see here, we got seven students here. We got 12 students here, so, so far we're at 19. And then we got 14 students in this bin. So now we are at 33 students. And then we got 12 students in this bin, so that's going to put us up at 45. That means that the 40.5 value, right, the 40 and the 41st value are somewhere in this bin right here. So that tells me that the median is three. Now notice the mean is slightly higher. And that's what I've been trying to tell you guys. It's not gonna be a ton higher, but slightly higher because I am skewed to the right. The mean is gonna go a little bit higher than the median. And you know, a graph like this, they're telling you the standard deviation, telling you Q1, Q3. So, you know, all kinds of uh, good information here. Tons of questions we could ask you, but you know, make sure you understand describing center, spread, shape, and outliers, and all that fun stuff. Um, here's just two more box plots. You could tell that the healthy chips at the bottom there are much more spread out. They have a higher center. Their median is at 200 versus the median for the regular chips is at 175. Um, all that stuff. So, you know, just wanted to show you a bunch of graphs. That way you're familiar with what you're going to see. The AP Stats Test loves giving you two graphs, kind of like this one, and asking you to compare them. So just make sure you talk about shape, center, spread, outliers, and please make sure you do it in context. So if I'm going to talk about this problem, I'm talking about the sodium content in milligrams. I'm talking about regular potato chips, healthy potato chips. I'm really making sure that I'm using all the context when I talk about this. Don't just say, the center is 200, the center is 175. Use units. Be talking about potato chips. The AP graders love when you speak with context on these problems. All right, that's it for this video.